Welcome to another Fully Exposed Experience podcast episode where we value truth and not taking ourselves or life too seriously. I've got to tell you, as someone who's very sensual, today's episode has a soft place in my heart, and I feel so happy to bring not only a man's perspective and insight to the table, but his partners here with us too. Their work in the world is like no other I've ever seen in person or on these internet streets. <laughs> and I believe humanity is starving for the deeper connection that they guide people to experience. So Steve Hayter and his partner Esther are here with me today. They help energetically aware individuals and couples make love at a soul level, moving beyond program sex where most people are not willing to go. Yeah. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much, Allison. So tell us a bit about each of you individually, how you came to the point of being on this path, and then how you came together for this work in the world. Yeah, the the first thing that I, I loved, the introduction, I felt as though it was geared towards me and I guess a good place to start would be that I came to this path through Esther and it operates a really a lot like the mythology of the, the oracle in the temple and I drew Esther in. I came to Esther when I was ready to do the deeper work and to go deeper in a relationship. And yeah, that's a, that's a, a funny story uh, in itself, how we met, uh, we might get there, but um, yeah, I'd love to hear what Esther has to say as well. Oh, you can even, um, we can talk about Um, when we met, which is that Steve came for a um, a bodywork session with me because I used to do bodywork. And um, actually he wanted to meet for a coffee or a tea. Someone had wanted me to hear his poetry and I heard his poetry. And, you know, at the time I have to say that in my body, while I knew energetic lovemaking within my own system, I did not know it with a physical man. Yeah, I had had an experience of it probably over a decade ago with a tantric master and so knew and, and almost that had templated my cervix had had jolted it into a remembrance. That's all it took for me was to go to the point, the physical point, which is the cervix, which is where the penis and the vagina, that's their final point of contact before it goes into the womb. And it all made sense to me all of a sudden what what love truly was, where it resided in the body, what it meant to be in the moment, how to stay there. Um, and it was quite mind-blowing actually because after this would have been early 40s, maybe late 30s, early 40s, um, after all the years of having had sex and never questioned, like sort of not ever being completely satisfied with it but never even questioning, never even thinking that there was another channel. Like it just, it, it didn't even enter my brain or could enter my brain 
because I'd been indoctrinated so heavily. Yeah. But I knowing, think, yeah. I think that is something that everyone is going to be able to connect with. Yeah. But knowing that somewhere I wasn't being touched. And my point was, was that when I met Steve, I ha I had this hunger in me. I still had this hunger. I see it in a lot of women. And it's um it's a starvation. And it's like any kind of man that comes on the field that that has any type of possible consciousness, you jump on it. And and I was like that when I met Steve. So someone told me to listen to his poetry and and I listened to it and I went, oh my God. Whoa, a man who speaks like this. Oh God, I've got a, I've got an, I'll, I'll, I'll make a connection with him. You know? Yes. I laugh, and I, I laugh now because, um, yeah, and I, and I can spot it a mile away in women, to be really honest. And they'll believe that the man is conscious. They'll believe that they've never met a man like this before. And this isn't being, um, this is just I know that 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 place, and um, and so I basically already had an agenda when I met Steve. I had an agenda, and I was a body worker, and so I wasn't. I invited him for a session, but it I had an agenda. So um, it wasn't to me. It wasn't like he wanted to go for a cup of coffee, and I thought, you know what? You're a conscious guy. I can feel that, but you're really in your head. Yeah, <laughs> you're really in your head. I need to bring you into your body, you know. So why don't you have a session with me? And, and you know, the rest was kind of, yeah, it, it was an agenda and it was an agendered session. But when I look back and, but to be honest, um, I think Steve came with the same kind of idea really and he was willing to go into his body and, after that session, we looked at each other for probably 45 minutes on the couch and I literally felt his energy um, penetrate into me in a, um, in a very sexual way. So it was his, I, I can feel a man's presence as his penis entering me. energetically so I know when a man is penetrating me in my field and usually they're not aware <laughs> yeah usually they're not aware just past me tissue yeah yeah usually they're not aware and Steve wasn't aware of what was happening so much in my body but he knew something very um yeah deep what's happening I love it and that pings the common thread of numbness that I think we all experience with the heavy indoctrination and the programming that we've all experienced and just that sensitivity of being able to feel that energetic penetration Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and I also know how to um yeah penetrate into the presence of a female cervix in terms of because my consciousness is so um on point in myself and and pretty much I, I imprinted at the time that I had that experience with the tantric mask it was a remembrance so you'd say I must have known it somewhere and I had already been working with people's bodies in a lovemaking, in an energetic lovemaking, lovemaking capacity but hadn't recognised it. No one had come and said, yes, where you're feeling everything is right, um, how you're, how, what you're picking up is right. But when I was with this tantric master, it all just was like, oh, God, I've known all of this all along.
And I want to say it stands a woman in good stead to know where and when she's being penetrated and how she's being penetrated. And that's what we teach women to recognise in themselves because it puts her in a very anchored position and in a very non, in a very whole bodied state of being when she's with a man. And she knows she's already, he's already there if, if there's an attraction. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so at that time with Steve and I, I still had that hunger though. So I knew it and I didn't know it. And um I was testing out what I knew and you need to do that when you're a woman who is given these kind of quote unquote codes <laughs> the she principle where you are in touch with her and um, I basically went into the relationship with Steve hungry but not pre but not prepared to feed from any man Mm. to keep to keep returning back to my inner male principle as the nourishment and to test out that by what I was experiencing with Steve. Steve do, you <clears throat> Steve, do you have anything that you'd like to share from your side of the coming together? It was the most profound thing for us to have a body session as our first meetup. And... I think there was a part of me that wanted to have the the lightness and the and the mental uh like staying in the staying in the head that comes with a coffee catch up or a, or uh something like that and Esther's gift is when she works on when she works on when she was working on people's bodies the awareness is drawn down into the body in such a profound way that i had not experienced before and i really defined my sense of self through my mental space and my sense of self the seat of myself uh was was in my head and didn't really go down into my body certainly not when in a conscious way and so after that session i had this really low amount of thinking going on uh, because all of, like a lot of my presence was in my body and I just remember this clarity and looking around free of mental noise. And that was when we, we sat down and, and just shared presence in the bodies opposite each other on, on the couch, you know. And that was my probably my first significant experience of relating to a woman 
in her native language in the body as opposed to bringing her up into the head to relate with me maybe in my native language. Mm. And it just, yeah, it just felt very... Um, this felt wholesome, synchronizing, and connective. And so I thought, yeah, I want to, I want to know this woman more. She's, uh, you know, I'm, I'm picking up what she's putting down, and uh, it was really at a point, Alison, where I had been having surface level interactions, casual interactions up until that point for a couple of years and about two weeks before meeting Esther, I shut down my dating apps. I was like, yep, I've had enough and decided that I wanted to go deeper with somebody in a way that was beyond the personality because I, I'd really been hitting the confines of the level of depth that was possible from within, within a, a mind-based self-expression. I love it. And that brings me to one phrase that stands out to me every time I see you come across my social media, and that is still point lovemaking. Your work is so next level. And can you share what you mean by still point lovemaking and perhaps what that looks like? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. And also that he was in an open relationship when he met me as well. So he was in, he, he sort of hit, hit the ceiling of the set. I wanted, he, there was a point in him where he was thinking, God, you know, is this what sex is about? That's what you've told me before. Yeah. And he sort of hit the ceiling of, like he could, he could meet people and hook up with them and have a partner on the side and, all that type of thing, all the type of thing that women get told men absolutely want. That's, but it wasn't. That's an know. important point to make. Yes, that's that's good. Yeah, and it wasn't satisfying him. Yeah, and I think um, that it, it's very important to know as a woman as well, because we, I mean, we we work with men and women. But particularly women are insecure around a man wanting lots of women or um, feeling like they're insatiable sexually and, and, and that kind of thing. And that's not where true fulfilment for a man exists. And it's going to take women challenging that notion inside of themselves in order to experience that in their body. And then there's nothing that can um, shake them. They know it. They know it. And then they can talk about it. And then they can they can share it with others. And they know it. It's in their field. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, and I'll I'll get to the still point love making. But there was something I wanted to say in response to what Esther said. And. That is Esther through that what she had discovered inside of herself and her internal um, work and being with her parts internally and and using you know using her time and and her will to 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 do that was very magnetic for me and. I had met somebody in Esther who 
had a really rich and deep level of um, complex, like a nice complexity and, yeah, just depth to the way that she related with herself. And that really drew me in. And as somebody who I, I love intensity and I am intense and I really, I, I, I came in bringing some shame about two failed long-term relationships and I thought that I wanted to try open relating. I thought that was going to be the answer to to that and I'm glad that I did it but what I found is that I craved that depth I wanted somebody that I could really deep dive with and really work out for myself how to have an a, a relationship that is ever deepening that you that I discover new levels of love for this person that I crack the codes to no matter how much I unravel they're there with me uh, and unraveling themselves that's what I really wanted and I wanted somebody that I could uh, deconstruct and challenge my patterns with and who would challenge me as the most appropriately external, you know, the person externally viewing me in the closest way. Um, I wanted that to be complementary rather than a, a liability. And yeah, I, I get that. I get that in, in truckloads with Esther, with Esther. And, um, you know, it's, uh, it's intense <laughs> and I, and I love that because it's honest and it's truthful. And if it's uncomfortable, what I still come back to once the once the intensity of the emotion subsides is like far out. This person is devoted to the truth significantly more so than the appeasing, the comfort, the not making waves that can be a um a, a self-imposed expectation around how a good relationship should should go like um and that's the type of honesty that i have deeply come to revere and respect and love because that's that's what's going to take us deeper that's what's going to take us beyond social convention and societal convention is just a uh, an uncompromising connection to to truth. So yeah, that's what I wanted to say in regards to um, in response to what Esther said. Did you have anything to say about that before I move on to skill point? Mm -hmm. So still point love making. Thank you for yeah. Thank you for that. I hear that it. It jumps out and that's because we talk about it a lot. <laughs> and for me, still point love making. We coined that term because what we found when we got together is that we were both bringing this kind of, we were both bringing this satchel or backpack of things we thought we knew about sex and unpacking them in that moment together regardless of whether uh, we were feeling genuine or not with with what we were bringing and I certainly know that's how I came in as somebody who 
you know, classic story, I guess, for me and from what I see around the place is learning from porn um, and a sense of success, agenda, feeling feeling kind of like I had the I had the edge on um, on on most men because I paid attention to her experience a little bit or I I made sure that she uh, experienced pleasure and thing like things like that. So um, that's what I brought in. And what I quickly became aware of with Esther being so connected inside her body is that my top shelf, ideas and what I thought were tried and tested ways of having sex were really a source of agitation for her. And it was something that was irritating her and frustrating her both in the experience and afterwards. And it was really uncomfortable and painful for me to see um, such et, like big emotion in, in the space with us when I was, you know, bringing my best game. <laughs> and uh, that was very challenging and confronting for me. And Esther brought to me both her in-body uh, organically sourced wisdom and also naturally those sources in the external world that were as closely aligned with what she'd internally felt and that that material these couple of different good quality sources independent of each other we're really advocating for a slowed down or still experience with each other to allow for a, an allaying or a suspending or a stripping back of these conditioned ideas of what sex is to allow a, a space for the essence if you like the part of us that sits outside of thinking we know what we what we know making a, a space for that to come in yeah i'm sorry and a calibration between the two systems so woman's system is quite cool and man's system is hotter and there's no place for them to calibrate in sex in the conventional paradigm of sex and, and I realised that it's I, even just recently, and you might have seen some of my posts, that a woman's cool system is how they calibrate in a conventional model of sex is that she needs to heat right up. So he's got to excite her, he's got to work, on, her, work her up. And I knew that that was a fallacy. How do I know that's a fallacy? Because I work with where I start and if the woman's cool and the man's hot then there's nature knows what it's doing energy knows what it's doing right so I knew she's actually meant to be cool and he's meant to be hot and um and there doesn't need to be any working up and so what Steve's talking about is not only that, it allows two systems that are completely polarised, which everybody's all about polarity, um, but they're all, it's all about manufacturing it or finding it, where, whereas the genitals themselves actually just have it. They just have it. But... Um, yeah, so you just bring what you've got and you stay really close to what you've got and you don't deviate from it because you're bringing a vital point, peace as a woman, you're bringing a vital peace. And the trouble is 
women have taught have been taught to doubt that peace for millennia. That it's not okay to come cool. It's not okay to not want to be sexual. It's not okay to feel to not like the way your man is holding your breast. And I say it's perfect and you have to bring it to them. And it's the only way your system is going to be able to completely meet theirs and for them to receive in the gift of what you bring to lovemaking. So, so in order to even have, um, to for even us to have gotten to that point, because I was, for most of my life, I just heated myself up. I watched porn. I, I, I did all the stuff and I was actually, you know, the kind of lover that most men want to be with because I'm a shapeshifter because I was already a shapeshifter. So I was a shapeshifter and I would mostly concentrate on their needs but I would build, get myself my own needs met along the side and, and no one would be any wiser. Um, and I just never questioned it. Like I said, I was there to sort of perform or something. Right. And so what Steve is talking about with the still point lovemaking is we had to slow it down, totally slow it down in order just to let me be able to hear the true responses rather than the ones I'd come to to um, force out of myself. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that. What a what a lot of our our women clients say is that they they harbor a desire for the the sex, the lovemaking to slow down and to have that like that it's a it's a it's a difficult permission piece with with her that she can have him and all of his presence and his awareness that she is actually allowed to have that without the thrusting and and the way that he wants to to uh bring the idea of sex and so resoundingly this is something that comes up with uh the people that we work with that inevitably the it, that permission increases and she brings that to her partner and says i'd love to slow down i'd like to be still and i think back to the first time that i got introduced to this notion the suggestion that we came across initially was to plug the genitals in and be still for ideally 45 minutes. And I was like, what, what are you, what are you absolutely going to do for that period of time? Like there was an anxiety immediately that kicked in because of a fear of boredom, a fear of sitting with myself, a fear of, that discomfort being on the face of the other person and us us having like these sort of awkward laughs and and things like that that's what my mind threw up as a as a deterrent to to try this out but what we noticed is that when we did that it was something similar to that profound clarity that comes up from a from a really good meditation session mm. and we both the process the lack of movement meant that the energy required to to keep mentally engaged gradually reduced 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 until the mind just kind of gives up in a pop and we were together 
in a way in the body that was quite profound for us and thus started us having our own experience and in, and guidance and exploring into this place and we devoted to doing it on a regular basis and just experienced a, a radical shift in the way that we share intimacy, love and and connection with each other. It just it just we found something that just deepens forever when we connect when we connect in that space through stillness and um, strip away what's not real and then allow to cut, allow the body to to guide the process through yeah out of the unknown yeah yeah and when you ask about, yeah you guys have a complimentary experience in a facebook group facebook group called sacred love making unveiled and i can remember the first time i noticed you guys speaking of this still point love making it instantly brought up this memory that I had, the guy that I dated when I was 16. And what? I'm like, holy fuck, that's the experience I've never been able to have with anybody else. That's exactly what it was. But unbeknownst to us, we just couldn't make any noise because of their parents being of the parents being downstairs, right? But I would enter, I would let I don't necessarily want to say get lost in moments with him, but it was but it was still, and it, it literally is something you can only experience. Yes, it is something. Yeah. I mean, look, even as we're sitting here right now, um, so as I, she always guides me to bring in the body. So if things get too heady, I like my, I've been wanting to say that my breasts have this subtle, vibration going through them just this fullness just this you know beat in them just this pulse and our Steve mentioned that the lovemaking that so we'd seen that a woman and this is what I found very interesting I heard a man say that if a woman absolutely loves her man. She will, she can just have him enter her, no, no foreplay, nothing, and and have him be inside of her. And I thought that sounds good to me because I didn't understand why why love doesn't happen right now. Love just is, and it just is there. And Steve has mentioned that. Our lovemaking, he it had to be still in the beginning, so that he could pick up on subtle energetic inflections and characteristics that he simply had been overriding because the sensory body wasn't at a place where it could feel it. So it's it's, it's essentially a, a training, and and now when I look back, so it's taken us three years, which really isn't very long. Um, and it's weird because we nearly broke up a lot of times over this, um, in terms of. It really felt like there was a pull and tug between conventional sex and still point lovemaking constantly. So there was always this um, battle. And I think it was happening inside of me as well because I couldn't, I couldn't understand why I was so devoted to wanting to do this with a man and have been since I had that experience, so it would have been, you know, 12, 13 years ago or whatever, 
it was a long time ago. And ever since then, I was like, so I left, I was with, I did the tantric experience. And instead of going, um, this is the only man who can offer it to me, I realised there was something not right about that too. I knew that as woman I held wisdom that a man does not hold. That's that's always been my understanding of myself. I do not believe that a woman can go to a man to get her fullest wisdom. He can activate her and then she must explore it herself to the degree and become merge with God inside of herself to a degree where she's unshakable. And he, because a man brings the world to her all the time, a mortal man will always bring the world. Yes, beautiful. And so I just did not, I, I was, I, I have been like, like a dog with a bone, which is, I have been so devoted to wanting to experience lovemaking in this way that I just, I would, I would like challenge whatever came up that was not like it. And, and constantly inside of myself, I'd have this sort of voice going, are you freaking nuts? What woman does this? No woman questions a man masturbating, Esther. Like, what are you saying? And I'd go, and then there'd be this, this, this resilience or this strength or this, this backing that would say, you know what you're doing. Continue. You know. Yeah. I've heard so many, there's a few people I've noticed over the past week, actually, where the man on his own had chosen himself without her bringing it up to stop watching porn and masturbating and keeping it exclusive to their connection and how it has massively, that alone has massively transformed their connection. Yes. So his oracle has activated, but more than more than not, the love between them is shifting him. He's he's learning to love a woman, a one woman, because inside the union, it's one man, one woman. And I'm not I'm not discussing anything around the way people want to interrelate, but there can only be that union. It's and um it mirrors the, the egg and the sperm. One can only ever enter one egg. It, it's all, if you really deeply look at the metaphor and symbology of lovemaking, like if all you did was sit and reflect on that, the degree of wisdom that would come into your body is immense. Mm. I don't know why what's popping into my field now is um, I've been abstinent since the fall of 2018 and I've always been able to experience God through partners. Right. And I'm very, I'm all about the spiritual connection. <clears throat> and so it's like, I had that one still point connection before, and then I went abstinent to get familiar with my own energy again and to purge, you know, other energies that weren't mine and to really get intimate with my own field and my own energy and what that feels like. And it's, it's like, I know this standard that I want to experience and it's like that superficial I'm over it. I'm just, I have no taste for that anymore. So I think that's also why I am your work has a special place in my heart because I think it's necessary. And I think people are realizing something's got to shift within our connection or this, we're just, we're growing apart or like something has got to shift to bring them closer and deeper together, or they're going to find it with someone else. Yeah. 
Yeah, I love what you said there, Alison, and and um, there's this term chaste sexuality that's spoken about in old texts and and stuff like that, and I think our work is a is a contemporary a contemporary um, piece in that. Mm. Although we didn't know about it before we did it. Like that's the thing. We didn't know about about it before we were exploring it. Yeah, that's so right. So that's what I mean. I had a I had a template inside of me yeah. that that mirrors old time scriptures that have been hidden underground literally and are only just coming up now. Like of course they've been around, but they they got they're circulating more mainstream now again with things like you know no no fat or which is not what we do but right. just just giving that you know they then we're now seeing um an emergence of temple scriptures that have been repressed but i knew i had a sense of it and i'd never ever looked into any of that i just knew that there was a chaste way of of yeah. of experiencing sexuality. The amazing thing is that it's templated into every human being, into their genitals. And the incredible thing about slowing down or being still when the genitals are together and just placing the awareness and the focus there in a, in a sustained way is, is so multifaceted. The thing I didn't realize is that my penis had a lot of armor around it. That, that idea of a rock hard penis as being a beneficial thing. Um, the being still for a, for a sustained period of time with this devotional practice that we had actually de-armored my penis so that it was no longer rock hard, it would be firm. And there's just a, a whole lot more. And, and we work with the work that we do is around the topic comes up around a relaxed penis or a soft penis. And, you know, we help people move through the anxiety that can come up with that because that's a, a pretty important piece to, to being still is, is being okay with that because we deal more with the energetic of the lovemaking. But What's been very fascinating and curious is that we have devoted to this practice and then as time goes on, this information pops up coincidentally in our field and we're like, oh, yeah. Huh. <laughs> we do that. Yeah, that, that. That's our experience. And, yeah, so this this com these common um energetic and spiritual initiations and birthings that inevitably come up with this this way of relating when we allow for the space that was being taken up by our idea of what we think is sex or love making and make it vacant what organically begins to birth itself and initiate into that space is a fairly common experience that's been documented both in code and, and in different texts and stuff like that. Um, and it just is a, is a blowout for us and an affirmation that we're on the right course to um, having a fulfilling connection in ourselves and and with each other, but there is some big conditioning stuff that, like, that I needed to be willing to look at and consider letting go of, letting go of my attachment to, to allow the space for an experience to be birthed out of the unknown. I didn't know it was coming. I didn't know what it was going to look like. But 
when I make that space and I allow that to be more important than my idea of what I think I know and success and agenda, um, and I go timeless, I go into that timeless space or that zero point or whatever, that subspace, and I just hold the most minimum basic awareness necessary in myself to, to place consciousness on my genitals for an extended period, uh, then uh, that to me has been the most spiritually fulfilling thing as a seeker that I've been able to do. Mm. yeah and I want to go back to the point of you talking about the stillness when you were 16 Alison and in order for a man to be able to go into the subspace and this is the work that we do so even now I probably am making contact with your internal feminine sacred space just because it's my nature it's my um, it's very easy for me to do and so there's always a transmission happening when you see me directly and I've been even, feeling it off and on yeah I feel it uh-huh yeah so and and Steve how we operate is that Steve will go into my feminine sacred space and if I can say the cervix and the vaginal canal and and then I will connect with the person that I'm speaking to and I will ask them every single sensation that they're picking up and I will track it with them mm. because as Steve and I have been going deep into lovemaking, so there's all this talk about purifying the energy and it's a yes, if it's a fuck yes or it's a, then it's a no or you say no. I found lovemaking was the frame by which I could really understand all of this and to, to a, a tenth of a degree. So if Steve is off of the deepest centre of myself, I know it. And when you know that kind of, when you know that degree of energy a confidence comes in a woman that is unprecedented. And the amazing thing is that at one point, now Steve and I know, we look at each other. I said, yeah, it's, it's, it's one-tenth of a degree. <laughs> you know, like it, it's not, it's like in a quarter of a degree, I'm saying. <laughs> but, and, um, and we'll both know. Um, we'll know what she requires to go into the nothing space. Um, so, and how we did that in in, in is that she, you, a woman must be so so intimate with every single sliver and degree and tiniest movement of energy within her so securely she has to know more than him about where he's touching. She must know that. And so that's the work that we are helping women to really get a sense of. And then it travels up into their heart, it travels into their throat, it goes everywhere. And in, she doesn't guide him like, oh, yeah, more to the left. No, no, oh, around, circle. You know, not, all she'll say, she gently remains really centred with those sensations. She's, she's unshakable with it. And she says, can you feel that? So that she still gets to relax because it's very important that woman relaxes. Every part of her just relaxes, open. Mm. 
And once they are in this deeper centre of herself where all the divine feminine energy releases itself and the transmission that he has been given from his from his from the feminine nature which he doesn't get anywhere else because mm-hmm. she because it because it lives in her it lives up in her regions yep and very high up then then they they can communicate about how to deepen the love making he can bring more heat she can help him to transmute that but it's a very yeah it's a very um precise art yeah the uh one of the final pieces i'll say about still point love making is that it has allowed me to distinguish and pry apart um lust and love mm. for me for me they were blended together in love making or in sex and i brought all this heat all my ideas of what was good from porn or whatever kept my mind nice and busy and activated shut down certain parts of myself that might have been feeling some shame or stuff i didn't want to feel and things like that and i would I would go in with my ideas of success and 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 consideration and things like that. And you know, if we if we maybe lined up our orgasms at the same time and finished with a bang like that, that was amazing. Like uh, I'm, I'm the greatest lover. Um, yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so that was a really important piece: is the stillness allowed for me to review if from a very still and relaxed place and to watch as the witness the the part of the conditioning that wanted to come in and then the what was unfurling from the unknown and to come from a neutral position in what I allowed in myself and um, that sensitized my system to the point where I can track uh, track where the voltage is inside of Esther mm. and um, the positioning or where she's where where she, is uh, directing me to and where the release is taking place. I just have to say, I really appreciate you two going first, leading by example. Example is the leadership. And, uh, since you guys have come into my awareness, it's like this confirmation that what I have sensed and known in my own field to experience with a man, it is possible. It is very possible. And uh, I know I will experience that. For me, it's it kind of like you said, it's the devotion to the refinement of our discernment. And it's just, it's a muscle you flex, just like going to the gym. And uh I think one of the last things I want to ask is what is one guidance of implementation that our audience can do as a single female, as a single man, and then the couples, the individuals listening that want to bring it to their union to expand into something richer and deeper? What's one thing? Can I say one thing about what? you were just saying then 
I think once a woman, and I've seen this in our clients, becomes deeper, more deeply nourished by being in her body. So I've said to you it's it's in the degree of the lovemaking, but it also comes down to if in the field there's too much talking or there's a pulling out of the of the energy out of the body, it will irritate her system. She must speak up about it. She's got to, she has to. Um, now, look, to varying degrees, I will say uh, that was an art. Like that was, that was, you know, people talk about the sharpness of her blade. And when you're completely neutral, yeah, you can just say it and you don't care either way. But there's also, there's that training ground or there's that where you're going to say it too emotional. You're going to say it um, with shame around speaking up. And, and I must say one of the things that I learned along the way of that was to always go exactly as I'm showing up is exactly right. And it, even if I was in the midst of the most uncomfortable circumstances, um, particularly with men, and there were I have there there have been many, and I doubt I I would <laughs> they're not finished, <laughs> um, <laughs> because I trust how I show up. You know, I'm not here to really like I'm not worried about hurting people to a ridiculous degree, right. but you know as in i'm not um i'm not going to like someone said well you're not going to murder somebody we're not at that degree we're not talking about hitting people but we are talking about bringing some pretty damn sharp or 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 dangerous to the ego truths right right killing killing truths you know mm-hmm. they're going to smash things and the women with these oracle with this oracle nature, yes, they carry that, and 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 part of their life's purpose is to learn how to convey that to their lovers. But many women, and actually a lot of most women have this, but many women prefer not to even say anything and to sort of bitch with their girlfriends about what the man's not doing. And and this is in a very conventional sense. I don't know many people like that. I have known right. situations like that where their own inability to be true to love is supported by others and then they choose to be in those environments so what I would say is no matter how scary it is to a woman first of all continue to always go into your own body like absolutely adore become I had to become the man that loved me indisputably Angry, shrieking banshee, you know, every single facet of myself I had and I knew that the man loved me inside and it didn't matter. And it didn't matter if the other, if the man outside of me could not see the love that was in my behaviour. Right. Yeah. And I guarantee you, single for single women, when you get to that point, a man shows up. He can't not. He just does not show not show up. Right. Because <laughs> men just find that irresistible. It's not hard to stand out nowadays. I mean, it doesn't take much. No, well, their work, your their your like their work is is done. They don't have to do that. Now they've just got to look at themselves. Right. So, yeah, I would say to a woman and and for a man to understand that she's bringing him his deepest 
subconscious desire to be more than he is and that it's found in the body and her role is to express it from the body. She's going to not always get that right, but it's not good for her to be expressing things from an observer point of view, from that witness. That's not what she's got to, she, she can go into her body and say, Ugh, you know? Yeah. But it's but 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 yeah, becoming like him and meeting him all the time in a way that she thinks is palatable to him is not going to work. It's never going to work. That would be my yeah. And to go into your body and I'll find someone who will help you track. Mm. Inhabit, start inhabiting every part of your beautiful body, your hips, your shake a lot too. Look, I've got, I've got, there's so much. There's so much. My, mine would be begin as a, for a man, begin to play with the notion and, and wrap your head around that the woman that you're with or the woman that you will be with is an external representation of the internal woman inside. And that the way that she shows up is reflective. It is a an emanation of what's happening inside of the man. And what I have found is when I continue to build that bridge between the external woman her actions or behaviour or full expression and that being really an outward representation of my internal woman, there is a dissolving of separation that begins to occur, a taking a little bit more responsibility as well for the experience of this person and a taking into myself well if this is a if this is a reflection of my internal woman then like i can i can I can be responsible for that. It shifts the gaze inwards as opposed to an annoyance at the movie that's being played on the screen and that that movie is coming from a projector inside myself and that um, I it, it reduces that tendency in me to want to make her wrong, to want to blame her, um, because I'm protecting something or she's triggered something, which is her divine role in, in that dynamic is to crumble the conditioning, what's taking up the space and birth more of the, the real self into existence. The other big piece for people new to this is for men to try having sex that doesn't end in ejaculation. Mm. That for me was a big one. Like what's the fucking point <laughs> of going into it 
if that's not going to happen? Like, what am I supposed to do with all this heat that I generate? What am I, like, what, like, I can feel myself getting angry at the idea now of, yeah, of, of where I was at, you know, feeling that coming back up. But when we work with couples and we introduce this idea of bringing the bodies together and keeping it cool, then all of a sudden the idea of stillness becomes palatable and also this idea of making the presence with the self and with the other more important than this agenda to release the, the pressure, you know, as a, for whatever reason, reason, emotional regulation or, you know, just a fancified masturbation session or whatever, whatever the, 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 the stark reality might be. And then this, that is the beginning of the journey into sex and lovemaking or when sex starts to become lovemaking as this really beautiful sacred practice. That's, that's not just this carnal desire, this elevation from a pornography conditioned experience. It starts to become the most intimate way that we can merge with somebody and, and, and feel deeper sensations and activate inner inner knowings and our sensory experience and our connection with God and as a direct experience. And all of this stuff is through the gateway of being willing to slow down and keep it cool and just experience each other with, with little to no movement and to transition from anxiety around being bored to curiosity around vacancy. I like that. If, if I if I was if I had a, a Tinder profile now, on there would be something like lo looking for somebody to explore stillness with. That sounds like a fun experiment. And it'll cut out, uh, yeah, it'll filter out a lot of crap. <laughs> um, yeah. So that would be my piece. I love it. I've enjoyed this so much. It's been fun. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. And tell our audience, what is the one best way they can connect with you and find you to... Um, explore deeper with you two yeah we have as you mentioned uh, a facebook group called sacred love making unveiled jump in there it allows for direct contact with us um facebook messenger yeah uh, also message yep yep send message a message on facebook send, and saying that you, yeah yeah saying yeah. what you want to how you've been inspired or what you want to work on um the posts that particularly that i write write are very deep and they're a transmission in themselves and so just reading them will activate a person but not to the degree that to bring it into into their world circumstances um, but you can literally like pour over one paragraph of what I write because it comes directly from she. It comes out of, I write from her the same way that when we're lovemaking. See, I, I, I found this place where I became so clear of what was her and what was, um, what was me, so what was my personality, right? It was her that I would only communicate from her. And so, yeah. Um, 
I think that's very important. And I think anyone who's wanting to really elucidate that path in themselves to message us, either one on Facebook, um, because it is the most transformational pathway to becoming very confident, like lovingly confident of yourself and another person. Others. So beautiful. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in. I will link the group Facebook group so you can just hop right in there after you listen to this episode. And uh, thank you again. I appreciate your guys' time. And this was a lot of fun. That's the wrap. Yeah.